Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we spent a bunch of time trying to pass laws and f just kind of find out the lay of the land at the floating parliament as we assumed our position of a member of the parliament. That was interesting. Uh, basically, at the moment, where we're left with that is we need to find more will of the people in different places, like actually London is one of them. And then with that, we can go back there and try to pass more laws to help them. But let's do that some other time. For this episode, I have two big things I want to do. First thing, level up. I'm going to go with a coterie. Along with some dear friends and acquaintances, you formed a tightly bound clique of free spirits. Unlock this by having affiliation bohemia at two or more. Fighting the prevailing opinions of society stifling, you sought solace amongst more congenial company. What shared interests brought you together? Now this one's a little bit weird for Elizabeth because it seems all very fancy, like a coterie and then these glasses of wine and the fact that you need Bohemia to do this makes me feel like, I don't know, it just feels like a bunch of elite assholes hanging out in a room talking about how much money they managed to spend last month or something. Like it feels very elite and shitty. But, this one is actually pretty easy, because I'm going to go with the option, A Thirst for Adventure. You were all captivated by the unlikely, the unwise, and the unnecessary. Why did they do it, people ask, of your latest antics? The answer is simple, because you could. So this makes it sound like it's a, a pretty large group of a bunch of people, but no, for Elizabeth, this is just two people. It's Elizabeth and the Incognito Princess. They've been spending a lot of time together, getting to know each other a lot more, and they both love adventure. Elizabeth loves it. The incognito princess, she became quote-unquote incognito and signed up on our ship because they wanted adventure. They love adventure. They want to see all sorts of new stuff. So, together, Elizabeth and the incognito princess are going on adventures. And let me just read this that I wrote in Elizabeth's character sheet. The Incognito Princess and I love to talk about our adventures together. There's so much mystery to the skies, and I can't wait to see more of it with her. It's going to give us five mirrors and three iron. Honestly, I'm not actually paying much attention to the skills that I get with these. I'm just picking ones that thematically are kind of interesting or, or fit the character. Probably not the best thing to do from a strategic point of view, but eh, whatever. Okay. Next exciting thing, buy a ship. But a couple small things to do before that. Repair our, wait, actually, there's no point in repairing the ship if I'm gonna buy a new locomotive, is there? Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's skip that part. Just a waste of money. Some port reports, I think, yes. Two port reports. Yeah, okay, let's go ahead and Buy the dang ship. Um, I'm going to need to sell some stuff, because I have extras of a lot of things. Just dump everything. How are we looking on money? 6800 The ship itself is going to cost 6000 So I do want quite a bit more, because I want another couple thousand to be able to buy that weapon as well, plus a couple thousand just left over so I can afford general stuff. Uh, let's see how much that weapon was. It was this thing. Yeah, this tier 3 rocket costs 1800 so basically 2000 So basically my costs are going to come out to 8000 So let's aim for having 10,000 coin. I have a crap ton of undistinguished souls. Uh, let's take everything down to like 10. God, I have so many munitions. What the hell? Yeah, okay, looks good. Oh, you know what? I can actually sell from my bank. I didn't have to take them out, but whatever. It's fine. Okay, I don't think this is... Eh, it didn't quite get me where I wanted to be, but... I mean, I'm going to have 1,500 left over. That's fine. I could sell more if I needed to. Should I? No. No, no, it's fine. Let's buy a ship. Alright, I am going to grab the Agravane Class Juggernaut. 
a thundering puissance, the terror of the skies, the harbinger of conflict. It is better in literally every way. Oh, I'm gonna have to name this thing. Right. I'm going to name it The Blythe. Somebody commented on one of the videos for this series and suggested uh, something like Percy Blythe's Reverence, which I liked. I liked the idea of naming a ship uh, and paying reverence to Percy Blythe because that story, it really affected me and I feel like it also really affected Elizabeth as well. So I do want to pay them some respect. Uh, but I didn't actually like how long the name Percy Blythe's reference was, so I'm just going to call it the Blythe. Our new ship, the Blythe. And now we have a new ship. New ship, yes! We've got 3,400 coins. Let's buy that new weapon. It's also, like, I could buy more armor as well. I don't know if I can afford that. I think armor's pretty cheap, though. Let's go see. Okay, definitely getting this. This is a big weapon. Yep. It's a big weapon, it's tier 3, and it also requires veils at 50 plus. In other words, it's really good. Now, what about armor? Yeah, they don't have any tier 2 or 3 armor. Surprisingly. So, just this bronze wood shielding, which is fairly cheap. Hmm. I'll be down to a thousand. I could sell more stuff. It's fine. Okay. God, we have so much health now. What's the max health? A hundred. A hundred is the max health. That's so good. And let's put this weapon... Uh, I guess I'm going to replace the Grimalkin. Yeah, I guess I'll keep this rapid-fire other weapon. And let's store this away. Probably end up selling that, but not totally sure about that yet. I want to have a little bit more money than this, so I'm going to sell a couple things. Sell two things of Immaculate Souls. Yeah, 1600 should be fine for buying whatever fuel and supplies I need along the way. Okay. Let's repair our ship back up to full. Got room for two more people now as well. I think I do that back at the station, right? Yeah. Handful of crew. 41% chance to make it cheaper. Yay! Now we're full. Only cost 20 sovereigns. 10 sovereigns per, per person. Alright. Uh, well, before I decide where to go, let's just take this thing for a test run, shall we? Wow, this thing is sleek. It's a lot less wide and very long. Ooh, oof. Yeah, I knew that would happen. Oh, is it just me or is this thing really fast? Is it faster? Hmm. I don't know, I can't... I can't quite tell. Like, it feels like the full speed might not really be faster, but it feels like it maybe accelerates faster. Like, this thing gets up to speed really fast. Like, takes like one second. Almost feels like it turns faster, but again, I'm not sure. I just can't really be sure about those things. But it definitely feels more maneuverable. Something about it is more maneuverable. Alright, is the heat any different? Oh, that's the new rocket. Let's not do that just yet. Yeah, I don't think the heat for this one's any different than the others. Seems about the same. Okay, let's try out the new rocket. So I think it can blow up on command or something? So if I fire it once and then click again, does that explode it? Oh, I think it did. Click. God, 
the range is absurd. I think it's a thousand. Yeah, range is a thousand. Before this, the highest range I've had is 750. So yeah, fire and then click again and it explodes. Okay, that is freaking awesome. That is really cool. I don't think it does an amazing amount of damage. Mm, 15 damage and then 15 blast damage. Still not sure how that works exactly. Like, maybe if you hit them directly, you get both the damage and the blast damage, so it does 30. But if it just hits them with the blast, it just does 15. Not sure. But yeah, it definitely, either way, it doesn't do an amazing amount of damage. But it works from an incredibly long range. And your chance of actually doing some damage to the enemy is very high. I think you can just fire two off in quick succession as well. Not that it really matters when you have to explode the first one before you can fire another. But yeah, fire and then click, click. Yeah, you can fire the other one immediately after. Ah, oh, let me at let me out a dreadnought. Come on, let's fight. Oh, I feel like this thing even goes backwards faster, but again, I'm not sure. That does seem like an awfully fast reverse, though. Remember, the reverse is really slow on the other ship. Hmm. Shall I go repair my one hole damage? Because I'm too long to be able to turn. Okay, I think we might be able to just speak with the Incognito Princess, by the way. Yeah. Ask Her Highness about the rumors, the crew whisper of all the engineers in Perdurance just disappearing, leaving naught behind but sporadic ghostly screams in the machinery. Is this true? That sounds terrifying. Uh, okay, so Perdurance, that's where... The Incognito Princess was really interested, and just went off on her own to explore like all the inner workings of Perdurance, all the machinery that makes it all work. The hour looms and all that stuff. So they're very interested in Perdurance and the machinery. The chatter of starlings and a swift correction. Two dozen starlings buzz around the princess's quarters. It takes some time to make yourself heard. It's not true, says the princess, gesturing at a short woman with tall hair and spectacles. My friend was an engineer. She hasn't disappeared. She's right here. The analytical suitor sits, staring adoringly at the princess. However, I'm glad you're here. I understand that a new poetical movement, inspired by the more melancholic strands of the celestial school, is meeting in Whirlbury Juxtamare. I wish to better study this notion, sadness. It is quite beyond me. She smiles. You're outside. study this notion of sadness. <laughs> okay. Gonna go on some adventures together. Should I look up how to pronounce Whirlbury Juxtamare? Yeah, I looked it up. I think it is Whirlbury Juxtamare. Pronounced mare like the horse. Uh, they mentioned something about it being Latin, so you could pronounce it like mare or something like that, but gonna go with mare. Hmm, I'm not sure if I spoke to the Rat Brigade after visiting Perdurance. They have Wilma's part of the account number. Who's next? Cinders knocks back a shot of something unspeakable. We have to decide. Our medic, VN, or our demolition rat, Angel. They refuse to work together. Lord knows why the lieutenant kept them in the same unit, though he did have Sponge for brains and managed to bungle betraying us all, so I would venture stupidity. Cinder's scowls. Anyway, Sarge knew we couldn't keep them both. Told me while he was scammered on the gin. Gave both of them the same number. According to her at Perdurance, Cinder's continues, Vienne is at Magdalene's. She won't leave till she knows they can manage without her. We'll need to give them a condemned experiment. If we want Angel, who is both A, more fun, and B, a liability, we'll need to plan a celebration. Munitions and a little inspiration. Your call. You'll be supplying the goods. 
Hmm, the medic or the demolitions rat? That does sound like fun. It is a liability, but a demolitions rat? Hell yeah. Sorry, Vian. Or V... Yeah, Vian. Vian. Munitions and inspiration. Well, that's no problem. Angel at Polmere and Plenty, so they're at the circus. Okay, another thing to do when I get back to the Reach. You know what I think it's time for? Let's explore a bit. I know that I had some quests to... Uh, I don't even remember the place was called, but there's supposed to be some place I can dock that's considered in London, but I have to go to a different station for it. So it must be somewhere right about here. Because there's no stations around here other than St. Dominic's. So let's go try to find it. Just load it up with a bunch of fuel and supplies. Gotta be careful about turning. Man, this thing feels good to pilot. Dreadnought, yes! Alright, let's do it. Can't see it, but I'm just blowing it up somewhere down there. Oh god, that's a golden dreadnought. Hmm. No, no, don't go forwards. Alright. Whew. Still have the golden one, but it's on fire. Damn. Navigation is sweet. I was hoping to get some spare parts. Where's the golden one? This is going to be an expensive repair. Yeah, the rocket definitely doesn't do that much damage and makes a lot of heat, so you really gotta keep your distance. Hope that's it. Is that it? Think so? Yes. All right. I love that sound of shattering glass. Random treasures are up to three fuel. Uh, up to three... Mm, 66% chance. Yeah, sure. Success. An explosion in the belly of the dreadnought locates the boiler room for you. It smolders at the end of a blistering corridor thick with smoke. Leaving your crew behind, you plunge through the clouds and make for the furnace. Beside it, still untouched by flame, are steel boxes. You drag as many as you can back to your colleagues. 
gain two fuel. Okay, let's go get repaired. Yeah, I gotta admit, the uh, damage is a little disappointing. I mean, I knew it wouldn't do much damage, but... I don't know, the low damage combined with the fact that it generates so much heat. I can basically just shoot once and then I kind of have to wait. It's a... Uh, it's a very, like, slow and steady weapon. <laughs> Gonna have to try to get used to it. Gonna have to try to get used to staying at a very extreme distance. Like, basically almost having them off the screen, I guess. Guessing this is gonna cost a couple... Eh, probably like 300... ...to repair. Oh, just about 200. That's not that bad. Okay, back out to exploring. Back to the unexplored area around London. I remember they mentioned at the Parliament that uh, if I do well enough there that they might be able to compensate me at the Throne of Hours, which is here. But last time I went around there, I didn't see anywhere to dock, so I'm not sure what they meant. Maybe you can do that from uh, when you dock at London, perhaps? Uh, am I going under this? No. <laughs> Wasn't quite sure. It's hard to see whether the lights were hitting it because it was so bright. It's really nice to see all the places you can visit from London as actual physical places. Ah, that must be the place. Hello. Trying to keep my distance. Yeah, okay, this is working. <laughs> oh, nice. Damn. Okay, yeah. You just gotta use it right. It's not a fast weapon. Pretty slow. Keep your distance. Keep shooting. Slow and steady. They didn't even shoot me at all. They couldn't from that range. Gain supplies. Usual cargo. Uh, yeah, let's try to gain some supplies. Two supplies. Your chef is delighted at the abundance of food still intact in the kitchens. He shouts something about a cornucopia before he disappears into the pantry again. I think we've read that before. I don't remember what business I actually had here, but I know I do have business. Man, that's a small dock, and this is a big ship. The head offices of a lumber concern the imports... The head offices of a lumber concern that imports bronze wood from the Reach. It's a strange sentence to me, the calling it a lumber concern. All right, this is to meet the uh, person that the, uh, the middleman... The grumpy middleman led me to. 
The Wind Vinegar Lumber Company operates primarily in the Reach, mining bronzewood and transporting it back to London for construction, furniture, and locomotive plating. This loading platform is frequent. This loading platform is frequented by brawny, wind-bitten men lugging slabs of bronzewood into the warehouse. Huh. Let's greet the workers first. You're accepted here now. I am. They return your greeting and invite you into the warehouse. Birds of a feather. The warehouse smells of sawed wood and the hot metal of busy saw blades. Timber stacked in, a bron in bronzy piles. A number of the workers, laughing in rough voices, are sharing a bottle of whiskey. They invite you to join them and tell tales of smuggled contraband and the devil that is the revenue men. You can peruse the available smuggling prospects at the bazaar here. Ooh. Smuggling prospects. So how does this work? Them that ask no questions isn't told a lie. Word has come to the blind bruiser from the gentleman that... Oh, wait. The blind bruiser? Oh, that's so cool. They... I don't know how the hell they did that. That's really clever. So, I guess it... I guess it recognized that at one point when I leveled up, I chose the... Uh, it was... No, not that one. A uh, mentor. This one. Yeah, mentor, the blind bruiser. Remember, that was the person that taught us. After we ran away from London. Kind of taught us how to live on the streets and how to find work and... And yeah, this is the blind bruiser told us uh, a message that was passed to them. The merciless gang of smugglers who operate in Eleutheria. Oh, the gentlemen. They are the merciless gang of smugglers. A bohemian baronet exiled for a string of scandals has led his coterie to the spice port of Aklis. He considers himself a poet philosopher and a devotee of the unspoiled word. As a result, he and his followers refuse to read works censored by the ministry. They want only unadulterated originals and will pay for seven trunks of illicit literature to be delivered to them at Aklis. Aklis lies to the west-northwest of Pan. Interesting. Uh, I guess Pan must be the central hub of Eleutheria then? Spring in their step, illicit literature for Port Prosper. Ooh. Prim Dowager lingers out of place near the platform. As soon as she sees you, she hurries forward, brandishing an umbrella. Ah, Captain. Uh, no, you need not explain your presence here. I can see at a glance that your character is above reproach. I'm here to stop the most awful smuggling to Port Prosper. Why, they say that anyone with, oh, oh seven trunks of illicit literature could just swan along there and sell their smut and scandal for a startling and entirely inappropriate sum. Shocking. I must insist you tell the ruffians here to cease this appallingly profitable trade at once. Her gaze is level, her expression carefully arranged. Prosper lies to the... Yeah, we already know where it is. <laughs> oh, that would never happen. Uh, okay, so where do I get these things, though? Illicit literature. Do they sell it here? They do. They sell other stuff, too. Concealed cavities? Ooh... Oh, there's a lot to do here. Um, so this would take the place of a normal prospect, right? So I want to be careful what I take. I'm not going to do the Eleutheria one, like, in a long time. But poor Prosper, I mean, that's easy. I wonder how much we'll get paid. Definitely, I will take that. And seven trunks, when each trunk costs 150, that should be a pretty good profit, because I'm assuming you get more than... A normal prospect, given that you're transporting illegal goods, right? Where's the... Where's the description? There it is. Wait, what? Hello? There it is. What censored sentiments are held within its pages? Are they seditious? Revolutionary? Uh, lascivious? Is that how you pronounce that? Lascivious, I think so. The Ministry of Public Decency would be horrified. I'm gonna need to sell some stuff to make enough money to even buy all this thing. Oh, all these things. Let's look at what tools they sell. 
Wit and Vinegar Sawing Device. Much like the Wit and Vinegar Company itself, this mining array is respectable, gets the job done, and hides secrets. Plus two hidden compartments. So two places that I assume I can put smuggled goods that won't be caught when they shake me down before I travel through one of the relays. Hmm. Winch and pulley. I think this thing is actually available at London. Yeah. Wait, actually, I might even have that right now. No, I have a better one. 11 hold. This one gives me 8 hold. Yep. Concealed cavities. Hidden spaces in the hole which the revenue men might overlook. Plus two hidden compartments. Oh, and it takes a shield slot. Make yourself a little more vulnerable and hold some stuff. I guess in the walls of your ship. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come back to this in just a little bit because I need to sell some stuff to be able to buy these things. Let's meet. Visit the gloomy middleman's employer. The Wind Vinegar Company is owned by a blind bruiser. He keeps an office above the warehouse. Oh. Okay, well, I guess... Hmm, I don't know if this actually is written specifically to follow the fact that you chose the blind bruiser as uh, one of my levels up. Maybe the blind bruiser is just here regardless, probably. But, uh, I mean, I'm going to say that this is our blind bruiser. So we're meeting an old... Elizabeth's meeting an old friend. The Wind Vinegar Company's owner is, you hear, a self-made man of murky providence. He awaits you in a comfortable office. His suit is well made, but he seems uncomfortable in it, pulling persistently at its collar. Rings blaze on his fingers. His letter opener could be used to cut through a jungle. Yeah, that's a letter opener? Over there? Damn. Ah, yes, and this is recognizing that we did level up, or choose them as a, a level up thing. Renew your acquaintance. We meet again, my old friend. It has been a while, and no mistake, and a poorer while for your absence from it, if I might say so. But where we stand, or here we stand, reunited, and all is righted. This is so cool. Together again. Let me see if I can remember your preferred libation, he says, and selects it from his comprehensive drinks cabinet. A toast to cause him trouble. After you've both drunk, he speaks. I apologize for making you run that errand to the flower port. For me, there is no question of your ability, of course. But certain of my fellows needed a demonstration, and accusations of favorable treatment can cause ill will, and that gives people in our line of work funny ideas. And what is his line of work these days? He grins, and the lamplight burns on a gold tooth. Smuggling. Terror has been reduced. I, I love this. I love that it's recognizing our uh, relationship to the blind bruiser. This is so cool. Catch up on old times. Oh, I need nightmares for that. Hmm. Ask how to become a smuggler. A pertinent question. Very pertinent indeed, if you'll permit me to observe so. And I trust that you will, us being bound as we are, by bonds of mutual admiration and respect. New opportunities. All that is required, if I may be so immodest, is a word from me in the right ears. I've already taken the liberty of conveying that word, and opportunities to procure and supply contraband will now be made available to you. In fact, there's a juicy little opportunity waiting already. To carry a consignment of materials from London to Pan. I would encourage you to snap it up. I'm sure you have further questions, being as perspicacious as you is. I'll strive to answer them. Okay, I just looked up perspicacious. It means having a ready insight into and understanding of things. Mm, synonyms, discerning, shrewd, perceptive, astute. You're now eligible to take advantage of smuggling bargains and prospects. Weren't we already? Have more things opened up? 
Okay, can I ask any more questions? Yeah. The blind bruiser reclines in his chair. His ringed fingers fidget with his glass of port, with the ledgers on his desk, with his alarming letter opener. Ask about finding smuggling opportunities. The nature of our business is naturally clandestine. It's likely the opportunities have gone unnoticed by you before now. A situation happily remedied. Trusted as you now are, you'll be able to find prospects at London. In Eleutheria, you'll need to visit the Gentleman at Pan, and in the Reach, you want Titania, the Midnight Rose, with whom you've already established an acquaintance. See to matters there. You can buy and sell contraband at each of those places. I should warn you, though, this is not a straightforward business. It's not unusual for our runs to be plagued by complications. Fiercest and foremost among them, of course, being the Revenue Men. Find smuggling prospects at London, Pan, and Titania. Ask about the types of contraband that are traded. Most regions have a particular specialty they export. Exempting the Blue Kingdom, of course. We have no business there. Nor should we, in my opinion. The Reach exports its red honey. What unlocks the chambers of the heart? Here in Albion, thanks to the Ministry, our chief contraband is literature. Anything uncensored or revolutionary or what contains a bit of as you like it, he leers. In Pan, they make shinny, starshine, light as was cast by stars that could be seen from old earth. Nostalgia is a reliable vice in my experience. The more contraband you carry, the harder it'll be to conceal. A good smuggler installs hidden compartments into their locomotive to hide as much as they can. That means buying the right equipment. Carrying more contraband is harder to conceal, fit equipment that grants hidden compartments to make smuggling less risky. But smuggling is never safe. Okay. Interesting. I think I like that. So even if you have hidden compartments, it's not like that's guaranteed 100% to save you from anything going wrong and, you know, the revenue men finding your stuff. There's always some danger. That makes sense, because of course there is. And let's just roll back to here. This was interesting. In Pan, which is an Eletheria, they make shiny or shiny starshine. Light, as was cast by stars that could be seen from old Earth. Nostalgia's reliable vice. That's so interesting. People buy starshine from stars that were visible from old Earth. Also, old Earth. Interesting term. Are we still on the same Earth? Are, are we on Earth at all? Huh. Anyway, you know, there being no real ground, it's uh, not something I think about a lot. Ask about the revenue men. He shakes his bald head sadly. Smuggling means carrying contraband from one region to another. That means using the transit relays. And the relays, you see, is watched by the revenue men as cruel and humorless a body of joy throttlers as ever there was. He tops up your glass. You might be able to hide your wares from them. Failing that, some of them can be bribed or flummoxed. Worst comes to worst, you might risk shooting your way free. Fully completing a smuggling prospect grants better rewards than completing legitimate prospects. They also grant double experience. Ask what happens if you're caught. Well, should, and I question whether it's worth speaking of this to a person of your vinegar, even in the hypothetical, but should the unquestionable occur and you be caught, you'd be sentenced. An initial sentence is likely to be fiscal in nature, fines and confiscations and so forth. Why, well, little more than a slap on the wrist to the likes of you and I. But repeated occurrences will levy more memorable punishments, like imprisonment or even the noose. The law has a long memory, comrade does not easily forget. Customs checks can happen on arrival at relay stations. The more you are caught, the harder or harsher the penalties will be. Ooh. Imagine if Elizabeth's story ended with them getting hung for smuggling contraband. Damn. It'd be a sad end. Alright, I think 
That's it. So I'm going to head back to London and see if I can sell some more stuff so that I can actually buy some smuggling compartments and all that. Let's see how much I can get at the Silken Salon where we can sell stories and things like that. I have 21 salons to gossip. Not exactly a massive amount, uh, but I'll donate five of them. Well, it's not really a donation, is it? Because I'm getting paid. <laughs> I'll, I'll sell five of them. Mystery stamp permit. I don't want to be without those. I don't think I want to sell my cryptic benefactors. Hmm. Guess that's it then, huh? Okay, I guess I'll sell some of my items then. So, from the bank. Maybe... Rolls of Thirsty Bombazine? Bronzewood? Let's sell the Bronzewood. I, I don't have any quests for that, right? No. Yeah, that's going to be a good amount of profit. Plus maybe a couple of Immaculate Souls. There we go. That should be plenty. Hmm. I was thinking of buying the sawing device, but actually I can't use it. I need irons of 50 plus. So I can just get two of these concealed cavities. I'm going to be able to hold four things at one time. And this quest is for seven. So no way I can do this in one run unless I put some in the concealed cavities and some not. Which wouldn't make any sense. Right? I don't think that would really help anything. I feel like there's not much of a difference between having one thing out of a concealed cavity versus like 20 things. Because if they find something, then it's probably going to be the same result. But anyway, definitely going to buy these two. And, hmm, gets you two hidden compartments. Is that like an extra on top of my hold, or what? Yes, looks like it is. How does that work? How do I, like, use it? I was thinking maybe I just buy it and it just automatically gets put in there. And then this, this popped up. Contraband. If you've acquired your first contraband, highly illegal items that would be best not to be found with. Contraband has some very profitable uses, but it would be safest just to jettison it if you haven't discovered them yet. In particular, be careful taking it through transit relays. Most of them do customs checks. So, is it automatically hidden? Yeah, it's purple. So it just automatically uses up these hidden slots. And does not use up the non-hidden slots? No, it looks like it does use up. It uses up both slots. Okay. That's not that big of a deal. Alright, well, I don't have much money. And Port Prosper isn't very far away. Just on the other side of that relay. Let's go to Port Prosper. Here we go again. Present yourselves to customs. They shouldn't find anything. A taciturn inspector boards the ship, licking a fresh pencil and signing his name on a pristine new search form. Shall we, he says, carefully double-checking his own spelling before moving on. Nothing to declare, surrender your contraband, or conceal it. 90% chance of success. Okay. Everything is safely packed in your hidden compartments. Hopefully the revenue men will not find those. Success! Nothing to see here. The taciturn inspector reluctantly decides that if you're hiding anything, nobody would blame him for missing it. This is as close to innocent as his precious form allows. He waves you off without a word. Alright, let's go first class. I think first class, I'm not sure exactly what second class does, but first class seems to lower my terror. Maybe second class would actually gain terror or just not lower it. Let's see how much it goes down. 26, 11, nice.
So much gunfire happening around Port Prosper. <laughs> I want to join it all. Alright, uh, let's explore to begin with. Take tea at the Admiral Nelson. Sure. Most famous cafe in all of Port Prosper is open today. The Admiral Nelson is Port Prosper's most exclusive tea house. West Enders congregate here to sit amongst the many little tables of ornamental shepherds and bulldogs and drink tea from little saucers with her renewed majesty's face on them. The Admiral Nelson is so exclusive, in fact, that it opens only occasionally and never does anything so crass as advertise. People know by word of mouth, initially at least. Afterwards, most Prosperans join the queue. Eavesdrop, sneak tea cakes for the porters. Yeah, yeah, let's sneak tea cakes for the porters. A few East End staff are kept on retainer for the less rarefied requirement of the Nelson's running. Remember the East Enders are the, uh, basically the lower class of Port Prosper. You cram a few dozen small cakes into a bag and make a quick exit out the back. The porters are exceedingly grateful. It's considered impolite to tip these days, according to the new etiquette books. One grumbles through a mouthful of scone. Hardly make enough to pay off the uniform. A few stolen and discarded pieces of crockery exchange hands. Last seasons. Too modern for the Nelson. Hmm. Oh, whoa, I just gained eight crates of nostalgia crockery, which I don't have room for. Shit. Well, at least I don't have to deal with that until I leave this place. Let's sell the trunks of illicit literature. So I bought them for either 125 or 150 each. And they're selling for a pretty good profit. Not like an amazing profit, but pretty good. And there's supposed to be an extra bonus if you actually complete the whole thing. Now I'm just need to free up two more spots. Well, the crockery is worth more than fuel or supplies, so I'm just going to go ahead and sell a couple of fuel. Yeah, that's fine. And I guess I have no room for the deal. Oh well. Munitions will have to stay here. Right, I think that's all there is to do here. Hmm... I do have a couple quests to do in the Reach. Debating whether I should go do them while I'm here. Or just go back. I do want to finish this prospect. So I kind of want to go back. And then get more illicit literature and bring it back to Port Prosper. But uh, I'll decide that whole thing in the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon.